In this video, I'm going to be solving equations in a quadratic form and using a u-substitution method. This is part two of two. So I did first video that really introduced the idea with a couple easy examples. And then these two examples are just going to be some unusual things that you might run into but would still fit into this category of a u-substitution method because it is in a quadratic form. The equation is in a quadratic form. All right, now from the first video, we remember um, that you were supposed to look at your first two terms and then see if the exponent on the middle term was half of the exponent on the first term. Now in this scenario, we're not just going to have a, a single variable here that we're going to have to look at. We're going to actually have a binomial that matches. We've got an x squared minus 5 in both of these terms. It's raised to the second power here. It is raised to the first power here. All right, so then it does qualify. This exponent is half of that exponent. All right, now we are still going to continue to use a u-substitution method, and I'm going to take this middle term, and that's going to be what I let u equal. So I am going to let u equal the x squared minus 5, and then to the first power, but I'm not going to write it as that. I'm just going to write it as the binomial itself, x squared minus 5. Okay, now, rewriting this equation in terms of u, I would then have a u squared plus a 3u minus 10 equals 0. Now, I am down to a trinomial that factors easily, so we will guess and check that with a u and a u here. Um, factors of 10, that's going to give me a 3 in the middle, would be a 5 and a 2. I need that 3 to be positive, so let's put the positive with the 5 and the minus with the 2. All right, I've got these two factors, so I'm going to set both of them equal to 0. So x equals 2, or uh, u equals 2 here, and u equals a negative 5 here. All right, now if you remember, in the first video, we said you got to make sure and not forget. You cannot stop at this point. These are not your solutions because you have solved for u. That original equation was in terms of x, so I've got to replace my u equals x squared minus 5 in order to finish solving this. So we're going to replace um, u equals x squared minus 5. All right, so basically then I'm going to take this expression right here, replace the u with the x squared minus 5. So I'm going to have an x squared minus 5 equals 2, replacing this one x squared minus 5 equals a negative 5. All right, and then from here, it's going to be an equation that we can hopefully easily solve. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. x squared equals 7. And I need to take square root of both sides now to solve for x. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 7. On this one over here, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. That'll give me x squared equal to a 0. If I take square root of both sides, I just get an x equals 0. All right, so, and again, in that first video, we focused on, okay, when you get done with these, you need to definitely plug them back into that original equation, check them, make sure that they do work. Um, I think I've already previously worked the check on these, and all of these work as solutions. All right, now in this uh, second example here, I thought I would do one with negative exponents. All right, you sometimes see negative exponents like that. This, again, the same method's going to work if it's in this quadratic form, so I'm going to check both those first and second terms. And negative 1 is half of negative 2, and so it is in this quadratic form where the u-substitution method is going to work. So I am going to let my u be that middle exponent term. So we're going to let u equals x to the negative 1. All right, that then allows us to rewrite this equation in terms of u. So this will be a 10u squared plus 7u plus 1 equals 0. All right, and again, I've now created a trinomial here that I can guess and check and factor easily. Um, let's use a 5u and a 2u. Only choices for 1 would be 1 and 1. Everything's positive, so plus and plus. All right, setting both of these equal to 0. Subtract 1 from both sides. I get a 5u equals a negative 1. 
So u equals that negative one-fifth. Doing the same thing to this one, subtract one from both sides. Two u equals a negative one. So u equals a negative one-half. All right, now I'm going to need to realize I'm not done yet. I have just solved for u because I rewrote that equation in terms of u. So I've got to replace my u with an x to the negative one so that I get back in terms of x. So I'm going to replace u equals x to the negative 1. So on each one of these, I'm going to do x to the negative 1 equals a negative 1 fifth. And on this one, I'm going to go x to the negative 1 equals negative 1 half. All right, now, here again, you've got to solve for x. Um, in the first video, we kind of addressed this, you know, different um, exponents on our variable, different techniques that we could use. I need to get this down to a plain x. If it is x raised to the negative 1, I could choose to multiply both sides of the equation to a raise to a negative 1. In other words, so then negative 1 times negative 1 would give me a 1. It would square out there. All right, or you could think of, oh, let's write this as a proportion. If I do laws of exponents on this, I could move this to the bottom and make it positive, and I think actually that's going to be an easier way to do it. Now let's do that. Let's move this down to a 1 over x to the positive 1 equals negative 1 over 5. All right, now I have a proportion, and I can just cross multiply down. If I cross multiply down, I get a negative x equals 5, divide both sides by negative 1, so x equals negative 5. All right, I think that's probably the simplest way to do that. All right, let's do what I was talking about, though, a minute. Let's go ahead and raise that to a negative 1, just to show you um, a, few more, a few more steps, a little more complicated, but just to give you another choice. If I raise both of them to a negative 1, all right, negative 1 times negative 1 is going to give me a positive 1. I would get down to an x really easily there. But then I would have a negative 1 half raised to the negative 1. All right, so laws of exponents, I would have to pull that down into the denominator. 1 over a negative 1 half. That gives me a complex fraction, but I could easily then multiply through by a negative 2. All right, let's actually show that. Negative 2, negative 2. 2. All right, so then the negative 2's cross out and everything. That simplifies down to the x equals a negative 2. All right, so two different ways of getting there when you've got that x raised to the negative 1. I really think this is the easier way to do it. All right, but both ways work. And again, then x equals negative 5, x equals negative 2. You're going to want to plug both those back into that original equation and check to see if they work. I have already done that. Both of those solutions work for this example. So um, definitely thanks for watching. Um, if you needed um, a brief introduction to this, go back, find part one of the video, and watch that because that might be helpful as opposed to jumping right into these two types of examples. Definitely thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and um, hope you share with your friends. Thanks.